I'm Nintendo. And I'm Sega. This is Console Wars. <laughs> Oh, finally! I've been waiting for you! Did you hear the news? Yeah, Lion escaped from the zoo! How nuts is that? Why should I care about that? That will have no effect on me. No, you know how there's a new Mortal Kombat game? Uh -huh. Well, they had a contest, uh -huh. and guess what? Uh -huh. We won! What did we win? We get to go to an exclusive party. But, before that, we get to hang out with... Sub-Zero! Sub-Zero? That is awesome. We are gonna have so much ice for our drinks. Oh, uh, hells yeah. I got my ice trays right here. Boom. He's gonna be here any minute. And I don't, <clears throat> that must be him. <laughs> Who's ready to party? Um, who are you? What, ain't it obvious? Uncle Tony? I'm freaking Sub-Zero. No, you're not. Sub-Zero wears a mask. And he doesn't show so much chest. Freaking kids these days. Didn't you knuckleheads play Mortal Kombat 3? Uh, right. Did you bring the other costume? Get out of here. What do I look like to you? Some guy with two pairs of pants? So, what you been up to, Sub-Zero? Ah, you know, I've been uh, living out in Staten Island the last couple years. Opened up a nice little sandwich shop, Sub's Heroes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I get it. Uh, you know, it was gonna be uh, subs I can uh, rip off your head with your spinal cord, but you know, I changed it. Good change. It's a good change. I'm looking on Mortal Kombat 3 here, and you did wear a full ninja outfit. Hey! Well, actually, that was Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Ultimate. That version was much better. That had my favorite character, Scorpion. That had my favorite too, Melina. Well, don't forget your other favorite character, me. I was in that game too. Oh, the, uh, the brutalities were awesome, too. Not to mention all the cool new levels. Mm -hmm. Great game for the Sega Genesis. Right, but it's definitely better for the Super Nintendo. What? That's it? Are we doing this? Don't make me laugh. Best, Best Ultimate, Ultimate Mortal, Mortal Kombat, Kombat 3. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 was developed and released by Midway for the arcades in 1995. It's an update of Mortal Kombat 3, which also came out in 1995. It added environments, characters, moves, and game modes. The game was ported to many different consoles, Sega Saturn, Game Boy Advanced, PS2, Xbox Live, and iOS. The games we're looking at today are the versions for Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. While these games were both developed by Midway and are mostly the same, there are a few differences. Which one's better? Let's find out. These games almost look identical. Both games have the same looking characters. They have the same looking character animations. They have the same looking levels. These games have almost the exact same look. Actually, there was one weird change. One character standing animation is different, Rain. Rain's standing pose on Sega is like reptiles. On Super Nintendo, it's just like all the other male ninjas. It's a minor difference that doesn't really matter and just makes you go, I wonder why they did that. I'll tell you guys a story about Rain. He ain't such a good fella. He didn't buy my cousin's Girl Scout cookies. So I froze his dog. <laughs> well, I think it's obvious my game looks better. It has a much better use of color. Look at any two levels side by side and you'll see how the Genesis game struggles with its color limitations. The Super Nintendo, on the other hand, does just fine. In general, the Super Nintendo is able to blend colors more and give objects a better sense of depth. Take a look at the floor on this level, for example. You have the Mortal Kombat symbol with many shades of gray at work. And on Sega, all one color. A bit painful to look at. Any two levels side by side look better on Super Nintendo. Even my character select looks better. See how the background has a bit of a sheen on it in Super Nintendo? And on Sega, one color. Speaking of my character selection, check out Smoke. On Super Nintendo, you can see that he smokes. On Sega, Smoke doesn't smoke. How lame is that? Smoke on, Smoke. Hey, let me tell you about Smoke. Guy smokes all the time. He don't care who's around. I had to teach him a lesson. So I froze his dog. 
<laughs> well, uh, even my versus screen is better. The characters definitely look clearer on Super Nintendo. It just has better color and it looks less grainy. And check out this one. Here's Noob Sabot's verse screen on Super Nintendo. A little tough to do since he's all black, but they gave him some details, some depth. And here's his verse screen on Sega. Man, it's like they didn't even try. It's just, it's just a shadow. Even my character bios are more accurate. In both games, you have the blue portal level. That's the background for the character bios on Super Nintendo. On Sega, the portal is red. Way to mess up your colors again. Okay, I get it. You have better use of color. But you have plenty missing in your game, too. Talking about levels. The Super Nintendo game has seven different levels. The Sega Genesis game has 11. Super Nintendo doesn't have the bank, the temple, the soul chamber, and the subway. Why? These are some pretty good looking levels. What's the matter? Super Nintendo couldn't handle it? Well, let's focus on the levels that we both have. I have a few things that you don't. Check out Scorpion's Lair. See how the fire moves on the pillar there? And on Sega, no fire. No fire at all. And check out Jade's Desert. See Cyrax in the sand with his shadow moving behind him? On Sega, you have Cyrax, but no shadow. So I have details you're missing. In the pit, I have these two lamps. They're completely missing from the Super Nintendo game. What am I, Brick Tamlin? Who cares about lamps? You're right, it's not as bad as missing four levels. Regardless of the missing levels, my game still looks better. Sure, the Super Nintendo is missing four levels and lamps, but you can't deny that side by side it's the better looking game. The Sega game almost looks unfinished when compared to the Super Nintendo. The Genesis clearly had color limitations. Those limitations aren't as apparent on the Super Nintendo, giving my game a slight edge. With background animations and a better use of color, best graphics go to... Super Nintendo! Just like the graphics, the presentation is pretty much identical too. Both games have intros, character bios, verse screens, and endings. Right, but mine's better. Let's talk about those intros. Both games give you the story of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 during the intro. The Super Nintendo background is always the same background that you see during the tournament. The Genesis background changes to various levels. Plus, the slow crawl looks much cooler on Sega. That barely makes it better, and if anything, your intro is worse. You get the Genesis story one paragraph at a time, then it goes to a bio, then a demo fight. Paragraph, bio, demo, paragraph, bio, demo. On Super Nintendo you get three paragraphs, then the bio and demo. Three paragraphs, then the bio and demo. Bottom line, you have to sit through less bios and demos and get to the story quicker. Much better. I enjoy reading the bios. Oh good, because you have to sit through a lot of them in your game. Yeah, you're just upset because you're missing some. Like you said, both games have character bios. However, the Super Nintendo game doesn't have bios from Melina or Ermac. The Sega game does. More bios means more like the arcade. Speaking of the arcade, let's take a look at the HUD. Both games have very similar HUDs. You see the life, endurance bar, wins, time, combo damage, and occasionally Dan Ford. The only difference is that the Super Nintendo has the names below the life bar, while the Genesis game has the names in the life bar which is just like the arcade. Whatever, who cares what the name is? Let's just talk about how my presentation looks better. Both games let you choose your destiny. Then you see the list of fighters. See how smooth that was on Super Nintendo? Now watch what happens on Sega. The screen goes black and the music stops. Not a smooth transition at all. And here's another difference, the menu. On Super Nintendo, you have a cool spinning Mortal Kombat logo to select an option. On Sega, the words just turn yellow. The Super Nintendo game also shows you how many credits you have at the main menu. Sega doesn't. Also, my words look cooler. So many of the words on Super Nintendo flash. Those same words don't flash on Sega. My presentation is clearly better. Hold on just a minute, there's one more major difference. What? Me! Go back to the character select. On Sega, I'm on the left, and Classic Sub-Zero is on the right. And on Super Nintendo, I'm on the right, and Classic Sub-Zero is on the left. What does that matter? Ah, it doesn't really matter. I just like talking about myself. I told you about my sub shop, right? So my presentation definitely looks better. Even though two character bios are missing, for having a smoother transition, cool icon in the menu, 
the credits in the menu, and more Flash? Best presentation goes to Super Nintendo. Both of these games have a lot of the same songs composed by Dan Borden. Yeah, it's weird. They have the same songs, but they're on different levels. No idea why our stages of music never seem to match. No idea. And we might have some of the same music, but Super Nintendo has a song that you don't. My Jade's Desert theme is pretty sweet. So, I have two songs you don't. My Pit Lost World theme. and my temple Scorpion's Lair theme. I have those songs. I have every song in my music menu. I have all the songs in my music menu too. So both of our games technically have all the songs, just not during gameplay. Right, which is a really weird decision. Well, it looks like my music's better, since I have more songs during gameplay. Not so fast, let's compare the sound effects. Mine sounds so much clearer. Roll those voiceovers. Round one, fight. Round one, fight. Finish him. Finish him. Flawless victory. Flawless victory. And not only are my voiceovers better, I have one that you don't. Listen to Shao Kahn speak on Super Nintendo. Choose your destiny. And now on Sega. That's right. Nothing. Guess Shao Kahn likes my game more. You think Shao Kahn talks more in your game? Think again. Let's go back to choosing your destiny. Shao Kahn does talk here on Sega when you select your difficulty. And here's the cool part. What he says changes depending on the difficulty you choose. What does Shao Kahn say on Super Nintendo when he selected difficulty? Nothing. He just laughs. Every difficulty. Just laughter. Now there's nothing wrong with laughter though, because when you start the Sega game, you hear Shao Kahn laugh. When you start the Super Nintendo game, you get... Nothing. Huh, Shao Kahn's a bit quiet on Super Nintendo. Now let's check out gameplay. On Sega, whenever any character's life bar hits danger, you hear Shao Kahn laugh again. On Super Nintendo, no laugh. He even laughs during some fatalities on Sega. <laughs> Super Nintendo? Nothing. Also, when you freeze someone in danger, he laughs on Sega again. No laugh on Super Nintendo. I guess Shao Kahn likes the Sega game more. This might seem silly, but having Shao Kahn there, watching the fight and laughing, really fits in with the Mortal Kombat aesthetic. It's really close here, but my game has a slight edge in sound. With more songs during gameplay, and more Shao Kahn voiceovers, best sound goes to Sega Genesis. 
Gameplay is incredibly similar for both games. Both games have the same controls. Six different buttons. High punch, low punch. High kick, low kick. Block and run. In addition to special moves, combos play a big part of the gameplay. Such a big part that a new finishing move called Brutality is introduced here. It replaces the animality of the original which has now been completely removed. You still have other finishing moves too. Fatalities, stage fatalities, friendship, and babalities. New game modes were added as well, 2 on 2 combat, and 8 player tournament. The single player mode lets you choose between difficulties. The higher the difficulty means more players you fight. Verse mode also has combat codes. It's pretty much like a 6 character password you enter with both controllers. If done right, you enable one of the many cheat codes. Lots of similarities, but lots of differences as well. And I know just where to start. Nightwolf. Both games have all the same moves, except one. On Sega, Nightwolf can do an exclusive red shadow shoulder. It can go further than the green shadow shoulder. Enjoy not being able to go all the way across the screen on Super Nintendo. Okay, you have one more move. With Nightwolf. Who likes Nightwolf? Bad Nightwolf, uh, kind of a jerk. He didn't say God bless you when I sneezed, so I froze his dog. We're not friends. Okay, so let's talk about a character that more people like. Shang Tsung. In both games, Shang Tsung can change into other characters. However, on Super Nintendo, he can't turn into Rain, Noob Sabat, or Smoke. He can turn into all of them on Sega. Let's talk about Rain and Noob Saibot. In both games, Rain and Noob Saibot don't have fatalities, only brutalities. However, in the Super Nintendo game, they have babalities and stage fatalities. They can only do brutalities on Sega. So I hope you like doing combos. But everyone can do a babality and stage fatality. Not in your game. Oh, you want to talk about missing finishing moves? Let's talk. Remember how the Sega game has more stages? One of those stages is the subway. And what does the subway have? A stage fatality. The stage fatality on the subway lets you uppercut someone in front of a moving train. Since the Super Nintendo doesn't have this stage, it doesn't have this fatality. It's exclusive to the Sega Genesis. Okay, so I'm missing a stage fatality, but you're missing something too. Mercies. The Super Nintendo game has mercies. You can do a mercy after round three and it allows you to bring an opponent back to life, giving them one more chance. <laughs> The Sega game doesn't have mercies at all. You get like solar life in a mercy. It's pretty much pointless. But you know it's not. Having more stages. More stages on Sega not only looks better, but plays better. In both games you can uppercut from Scorpion's Lair to Khan's Cave. You can also do that in the bank to the roof. You can only do that in the Sega game since the Super Nintendo doesn't have the bank. Once again, it's exclusive to the Sega Genesis. Really? A bank? Hey, I had some very fond memories of that bank before they froze my assets. And <laughs> then I froze theirs! <laughs> That's what I do! <laughs> Since we're talking about levels, let's go back to those stage fatalities. Let's talk about the Pit 3. It's in both games, but you'll see it a lot more on Sega. On Super Nintendo, during single player mode, you only see the Pit when you fight Shao Kahn. That's the only time. This means during single player mode, you can't do that stage fatality at all on Super Nintendo. On Sega, the pit isn't just safe for Shao Kahn, it's thrown in with the other stages, so you can do the pit stage fatality in Sega single player. On Super Nintendo, the only stage fatality you can do is Scorpion's Lair. So in Super Nintendo single player, you only get one stage fatality. On Sega single player, you can do not one or two, but three different stage fatalities. More stages let you do more on Sega Genesis. Enough with the stages already! Super Nintendo has something else that you don't have, a hidden tournament mode. The Super Nintendo game has an exclusive 8-man tournament mode. This can be done simply by holding L and R when you select Start Game. 8 on 8 tournament lets you showcase your favorite characters against your friends. A highly enjoyable, exclusive addition to the Super Nintendo game. Yeah, but your tournament mode has flaws. First off, you can't play as Rain, Noob Sabat, or Human Smoke. Also, and here's the bigger problem, 
if you random select during the 8 on 8 tournament, there's a chance you'll get Shiva. Yeah, Shiva, a 4 armed fighter from the original Mortal Kombat 3 who's not in the Ultimate Edition. So it's cool that she's in Super Nintendo, right? Wrong! It's not Shiva! It's a glitch! It's just... Yeah. Now that might seem cool, but if you win with Shiva, guess what? The game crashes! Talk about lame! So if you get Shiva, she has to lose, or else the game crashes! That's such a lame glitch! I have the cool glitch! On Sega when you beat the game, if you press start on player 2, then you can do a cool glitch fight in the air. It doesn't freeze the game or anything. It's just a cool air fight. You know what's cool? Being able to take a break between fights. Both games don't have a pause option. That means you can't leave the game until you beat it or die. Or can you? On Super Nintendo, you can actually take a break between fights. The game will not continue until you hit a button. On Sega, however, you can't take a break. It goes right into the next fight automatically. Sorry, Sega fans. Looks like you'll have to wait to go to the bathroom on this one. And if you want, you can get to the next fight quicker on Super Nintendo. Just hit any button and you'll go to the next fight right away. On Sega, you can't skip the screen. You always have to watch it scroll to the next opponent. You can control your time better with Super Nintendo. Speaking of time, let's talk about fatalities. You get a little more time to do them on Super Nintendo. You just gotta be a little faster is all. But, you know what I have that you don't? Pong. That's right, the Sega game lets you play Pong. You can access it from the versus combat codes. It's teased as a next generation fighter. And Pong is exclusive to the Sega Genesis. Who cares about Pong? It's a cheat code anyway. And you do not want to go there. I will crush you. Fine, let's talk about cheat codes. And actually, we have a lot in common. Mm -hmm. Both games let you do lots of things. They let you mess with the timer, increase the number of continues, they let you do quick finishing moves, they also let you play as Shao Kahn or Motaro in the versus mode. They also give you access to music and sound effects, and they let you play Galaga. Looks like you get at least one retro game on Super Nintendo. Both games also let you play as Human Smoke. The codes are better though, because they're easier to get to. With Super Nintendo, you have four different cheat code menus. This means you need to enter four different cheat codes. With Sega, you just need to enter one cheat code, and it unlocks all the cheat code menus. What a time saver. Plus, I have cheats you don't. I can view every character bio and ending. I can also choose what level to fight on. Let's go back to increasing continues. On Super Nintendo, you can only have 30 max. On Sega, you can have 95. I also have an exclusive cheat that's not in the menus. Having trouble with an opponent? I have a stage skipping cheat. Just press start on controller two after round one to skip to the next opponent. Instant skip. Well, you need that because you're bad. Besides, I still have so many more cheats. I can increase fatality time, view the credits, and enable a pause. How do you like that? I can have two times health, two times damage, health recovery, and a power code which makes everyone weak. Then I have codes to affect the fighting. I can turn off throws, blocks, sweeps, and combos. I can have dark fighting, which is a bit interesting. A switcheroo makes your character change every few seconds quick uppercut recovery, and hyper fighting. Overall, so many more cheats that actually affect the gameplay. What are you talking about? I have all those cheats. The Sega game has all those cheat codes through the combat codes. The Super Nintendo also has those cheats in the combat codes. It's a bit redundant having it in the cheat menu and the combat codes. Not really, since you can only use those codes for two-player mode. I can use them for two players and single-player mode. And you still can't pause. Who cares about cheats? I still have things you don't. And I have things you don't. I really don't think your exclusives are as good as mine. Noob Sabata Rain doing babalities or stage fatalities isn't that impressive, since everyone else can do that. Mercies are fine, but it's just making the fight a little longer. 8 on 8 is cool, but it's really just more fighting, which I can already do. More fatality time is nice, but I can still do fatalities. I pretty much can do everything you can. Except go to the bathroom. That one's nice. And not all my exclusives are impressive. This move from Nightwolf you can still kinda do, just shorter range. Super Nintendo Shang Tsung can't morph into Smoke, Rain, or Noob Sabat, but you can still play as them regularly. But I do have exclusives you don't. I can play four more levels in my game. I can punch between more levels in my game. 
I have an exclusive stage fatality. And in single player, I can do more stage fatalities than you can. My gameplay has the edge. Since the exclusives in my game are truly exclusive, best gameplay goes to Sega Genesis. Even though both games are incredibly similar, one is better. And that game is Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 for the Sega Genesis. This was a really difficult decision since both games were so similar. We really had to dive deep in order to find differences with the games. After much back and forth, it was decided to go with the game that has more, and that game was the Sega Genesis version. It has more levels, more uppercut stage transitions, more character bios, more in-game music, more voiceovers, more moves, more stage fatalities, and more minigames. The Super Nintendo version is still a really good game, it just, by comparison, feels incomplete. The Sega game just gives you more Mortal Kombat. Sure, better graphics are nice, but more levels gives you more Mortal Kombat. Sure, flashy words are nice, but more character bios gives you more Mortal Kombat. Sure, clearer audio is nice, but more music and more Shao Kahn voiceovers gives you more Mortal Kombat. Sure, more finishers for Rain and Noob Sabat, Mercies, 8 on 8 tournaments, more time and exclusive cheats are nice, but more moves, morphing into every character, more punching between levels, more stage fatalities gives you more Mortal Kombat. Both games are good, but one is better, and that game is Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 for Sega Genesis. So when we head into this party, Sub-Zero, I can use a little pick-me-up. Yeah, I am ready to party. Whoa, whoa, both yous. I only got room for one. Minivan's in the shop. If it ain't back soon, I might have to freeze a dog. Only one? That sucks. Yeah, so who's gonna go? I don't know. Why don't you two fight it out in Mortal Kombat? Are we doing this? Let's fight. Oh, you guys are gonna, like, fight fight? I meant play the game, but that's awesome. Why isn't the train coming? Well, isn't it obvious? There's no train fatality for Nintendo, which means I can't die. <laughs> Sega wins. No train fatality. Thanks for checking out our latest video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Special thanks to Xavier the Lycan for his donation of both games. And thanks to everyone who requested Mortal Kombat 3. There were a lot of you. Be sure to keep those suggestions coming, we will get to them. Also check us out on Patreon, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more Console Wars goodness. Later. Let's do that again, ready? Oh yeah, you like that buddy? Come on! Oh, cross my face! Yeah, 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 go get one more, ready, ready, which one? Damn, oh yeah, he likes it!